بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والله أما بعد We continue with Surah Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the 12th chapter and it has 111 ayat verses. And the meaning of the chapter is after the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, who are Nabiullah Yusuf ibn Ya'qub ibn Ishaq ibn Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So he is Yusuf, Joseph, the son of Ya'qub, Jacob, the son of Ishaq, Isaac, the son of Ibrahim, Abraham, Allah Ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon them all. Uh, Ibn Thalathati Anbiya. We're told that SubhanAllah, all of these being prophets themselves, SubhanAllah, every one of them, and he being in this case a conclusion of or a culmination or basically uh, another one within that chain of Abraham to Isaac to Yaqub to Jacob to, to Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. وَيُصَفُ بِأَنْهُ الْكَرِيمِ بِبْنُ الْكَرِيمِ بِبْنُ الْكَرِيمِ بِبْنُ الْكَرِيمِ And subhanAllah, among the ways that he has been described is that he is the one who is in and of himself this beautiful, generous, wonderful person who is the son of the same, who is the son of the same, who is the son of the same. So all of these prophets, Yusuf, uh, Ya'qub, Ishaq, Ibrahim, Ali, Musalat, wasalam, all of them were being described as being Kareem by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And <clears throat> the reason why the chapter is named after him, we're told, and the surah kullaha tatahadath wan qissa to Yusuf alayhi salam fasumiyat bihi. Because this is a chapter that in its entirety is focusing on just the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, no other Prophet. And because it is exclusively talking about focusing on his life, naturally it takes on his name. Um, we don't know of any other name for this chapter besides Yusuf. And with regards to the general objective of this chapter, ذِكْرُ قِصَّةِ يُوسُفَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَامِ كَامِلَةً لِتَكُونَ زَادًا لِلْدُعَاتِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى That Allah Rabbul Alameen is mentioning his life, his, his, his mission, his ministry, his life of da'wah, as a whole, so that it could be a sense of support, a sense of motivation, a sense of uh, consolation for the believers who are also focusing on this aspect of calling people to Allah Rabbul Alameen. Sabab Nuzuliha, it is a Meccan surah, and we're told on Sa'd ibn Abi Waqasin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala unzil al Quran ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَتَلَا عَلَيْهِمْ زَمَانًا So we'll break the hadith up. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu says that the Qur'an was revealed to Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and he recited it, teaching it, calling the people through Qur'an. Naturally, the non-believers so that they would believe, but then also to the Muslims of the believers so that it would further strengthen for them their faith. And he did this to, for, for a time period. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ قَصَصْتَ عَلَيْنَا فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَلِفْ لَامْ رَأْ تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينَ And so the believers of the Sahab Ridwanullah alayhim, they had said to him, O Messenger of Allah, we would love it if you were to narrate something to us, tell us a story. And so Allah Rabbul Alameen revealed Surah Yusuf saying, Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of the book that are uh, clear, that are, you know, uh, in and of themselves elucidate everything, that make everything transparent. And this hadith is authentic and it is collected by Ibn Majah, Ibn Majah rahmatullahi alayhi wa anhu. As far as the virtues of this chapter, he amin dawati alif lamra, so the first is that, uh, the only actually uh, virtue that we have is that it is from those chapters that begin with Alif Lam Ra that the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi encouraged the reading of them. Well, what about the relationship between the beginning of the chapter and the end? Munasabatu awwali surah Yusuf Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi akhiriha al hadith wa qissat Yusuf Alayhi Sallam wa ahamiyatiha. So the relationship is all about his life and the importance of what has happened in his life and the lessons that are to be learnt from his, his life. Um, well, what about the relationship between, uh, so pardon me, so from the beginning, Allah says in the beginning, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ 
Allah Ta'ala begins the chapter saying, we will recite to you or we will recount to you the most beautiful of stories. That's how he begins it. And he says in the ending of it, the end of the chapter, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That there is certainly in the mentioning of their stories, lessons, morals for people of understanding, people of intelligence. So the stories are beautiful, but they're not stories of entertainment. Rather, they are stories for education. They are stories for guidance, stories for morals, stories to learn, to benefit from them. And as regards the relationship between Yusuf and Hud والسلام, we're told, لِمَا قَبْلَهْ uh, We're told, خاطب الله عز وجل النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في أواخر هود عليه السلام فقال وَكُلَّنَّ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ Allah Rabbu Al-Alameen concluded Surah Hud towards the end saying and of all of these we recount you the stories of these different messengers so that we will strengthen for you your heart. We will strengthen faith in your heart, strengthen your resolve. So the stories that Allah Ta'ala mentions at the end of Hud, He's telling the Messenger والسلام, all of these stories are being told to you so that your heart can remain firm and be strengthened. فَكَانَ مِمَّ ثَبَّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ قِصَّةَ يُوسُفُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالَ نَحْنُ نَقُصُ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ And Allah Rabbu Al-Alameen as a further strengthening of the Prophet ﷺ's heart and, and, and granting him that sense of firmness, he tells him also the story of Yusuf ﷺ. So we see the connection between both of those, chap- both of those chapters in the stories being something that are a part of what the Prophet ﷺ was to find guidance in his resolve to be further strengthened, his determination to be all the more firm, and his heart to feel all the more content with all that he was facing and undergoing because he's now able to look at his life and see it in retrospect among his brethren of prophets and messengers. And in doing so, he realizes his role within the greater role of what Allah Ta'ala has given all of the prophets and messengers of calling people to Allah Rabbul Alameen and what they face of hardships and what they also had of strengths and of blessings. And in doing so, that Alhamdulillah, his mission, his role, his purpose, it becomes all the more clear, and his resolve, his determination, his motivation, all the more firm. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.